Hey guys, Alan here, Solid Rock Bible Class. Hey, glad you're with me today. Hey, we're starting out this new series. We finished up our last one last week and um, ran into a statement from a psychologist. And it was an interesting statement. It's somebody I read after and, and listen to and and um, I, I love to uh, hear some of his advice along the way. And uh, he had a great statement out. And it wasn't necessarily meant for Christians, even though this guy is a Christian, it wasn't meant for that particular purpose when he was talking about it. And it says, don't forget to remember. Remember how it feels sometimes for certain aspects within your life? You remember what it feels like to get into a nice, clean car? Well, to do that, you've got to take and you've got to clean out the car before, as soon as you get out of the car every day. It's one of those things that, that I've kind of tried to learn to do recently with my own personal car. But do you, do you remember how it felt when, maybe when you lost 10 pounds? It made you feel so much better. You looked at yourself differently in the mirror. Do you remember what it felt like when you ate right. Now, I have a couple of foods that just, I absolutely love these foods. I crave these foods, but when I eat them, it just tears me up. It just tears my chest, digestive system up. And uh, so, I kind of apply this to my life. Don't, uh, you know, don't forget to remember not to eat this stuff because it makes you feel so much better. Do I remember, I, do I remember how it feels? when I don't, how much better I feel. And you can even think about that as far as our work life, et cetera. Uh, but as I say, this, this, this statement, it wasn't necessarily meant in a spiritual realm, but at the same time, I think it has a lot to do with the Christian or it can have a lot to do with the Christian. Don't forget to remember. You know, we're going to we're going to look at some overall words and phrases over the next few weeks here. And uh, you know, don't for don't forget to remember today though how it feels to be blessed by God. That we live live this blessed, happy, energetic life. Don't forget what that feels like to be blessed by God. And by the way, we are blessed. We're blessed by God. There's no question about that within our lives. Each and every one of us were blessed by God. We live in a great country. Even the poorest person in this country is rich in the sight of God. But remember how it felt when we were first saved? Remember how it felt when, when we had this 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 joy, this radiating joy of the Lord in our life and how it put this spring in your step and, and each day how that you took and you meditated on God's word and you started living according to, to the concepts and the precepts that was set forth within God's word. But many times, even though we are blessed, we don't remember how it feels to have that closeness with God. How do we remember this? How do we delight each day in how God has blessed us? We're going to look at some passages here, the, the passages I want to look at to start with. It's actually one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, and it comes out of the book of Psalms. Let's pick it up there. In Psalms, the first chapter, verse 1, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf it shall not wither, neither, uh, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Then he goes on in verse 4 and he says, The ungodly are not so but they're like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the godly shall not stand in the judgment, nor the sinner in the congregation of the righteous. And then the very last verse, it says, for the, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, 
but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Let's look at a few of these statements as we look down through this here. Let's, let's pick it back up in, in verse number one. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You know, when it comes to our spiritual life, when it comes to that relationship with God, we need to be listening to godly people in our life. There are certain types of people we don't need to be hanging around with. There are certain kinds of people I make sure I don't hang around with. And notice this progression. It says, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the, the ungodly, nor standeth in the way with sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. It's a kind of a downward progression he's talking about. It's being more and more involved in living your life like your, like your friends that aren't saved. But notice he tells us how we can remember and how we can take and have this relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ that delights us every single day within our lives. And he, we pick that up starting in verse 2 but his delight. Notice this delight. When I think of delight, it's always happy. It's energetic. It's a spring in your step. It's a bounce in your, in your every step you make along the way. But his delight is in what? The law of the Lord. Notice that the law of the Lord, it's not something that he's talking about here that's a drudgery. You know, reading God's word it shouldn't be like, well, I've got to sit down and read my Bible today. It's something that we should delight in. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Hearing it, reading it, understanding it, meditating on it, chewing on it, thinking about it here. And then he goes on and he says, and in this law doth he meditate day and night. We take and we think about it and we chew on it and we apply it to our lives and when we do that it says his delight is in the law of the Lord his happiness is there and then he goes on he's going to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth her fruit in due season his, his leaf shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper for, for a little short period of time when I was a child, we took and uh, we had moved to, off to Arizona. We moved back to the San Francisco Bay, Bay Area after that. And uh, we rented a house for a very short period of time there while well, we was having, buying another house at the time. But we had, uh, we moved into a rental house. It was in downtown San Pablo and it was right next to a creek bank. And there was always water flowing through that creek. And these trees, they were lush. They were beautiful. And there was all types of vegetation that grew when you went down into that particular area. There was everything from the trees to the berries. It was just its own little cool ecosystem. That's what he's talking about here with us in our lives. That when we take and listen to what he said here in verse 2, his delight is in the law of the Lord. His, his delight is in God's word. Now remember, God's word is where we pull our faith and practices from. That is our authority like we talked about the last few weeks. God's word is our authority. It's not some other book. But it says his delight's in the law of the Lord. And he says he'll be like this tree planted by the rivers of water. And I remember, as I said, I talked about living next to this creek with the water always running through it and how lush everything was and how pretty everything was. Why? Because it had that water source. And as Christians, if we do what he's talking about here, we have that source of life. We have that water source that he's talking about here, like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And it says here, that bringeth forth the fruit in season. And then it says, his leaf shall not wither. 
you know, I, I see that, I see this leaf withering occasionally, especially in the valley when we start getting for days and days for, for over a hundred. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. God is going to prosper us spiritually, personally, if we take and we listen to what he has to say to us. And then that verse four, he says, but guess what, the ungodly are not so. You say, hold it now, I, I know a lot of ungodly, uncouth people that just, they just seem to, to flourish within their lives. They seem to be happy. They seem to have lots of money and they seem to have lots of toys and a lot of things. But you know what? Down deep, they don't have this peace that he's talking about, this peace like a river that he's talking about here to us. And he goes on in verse six and, and says, for the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous. God knows our way. He's guiding our steps. He's guiding our way. But then he goes on and says, the ungodly, they're going to perish. So, so to, to be, to begin with, the, the Christian man and woman's path, it's separate from what we see the world. It's not the same direction. It's not the same path. The Christian follows Jesus Christ. His commitment is to God, and it's to his commitment is to God on a continual basis. And in God's word, we find this wisdom. We find these truths. We find things that make us happy. Remember, don't, uh, I mixed up my own phrase, didn't, it? didn't I? Don't forget to remember what it felt like to have these mountaintop experiences with God. Don't forget what it feels like. Don't forget what it feels like to be blessed by God. But God's word is the basis of our faith. It's part of our practices. Let's look at the book of James for just a second. And uh, it says, blessed or happy is the man that endureth temptation. Notice. Happy is that Christian person who doesn't participate in sin. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, doesn't give in to it. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to him, to, to them that love him. So notice he says, we are a blessed people. We need to live like we're a blessed people. We need to think like we're a blessed people. We need to act like we're blessed people. And then I'm going to skip over real quick into the book of 2 Corinthians for a second. 6 chapter verse 17. He tells us, again, how to be blessed. How to feel blessed. How to remember what it feels like to be blessed. In 2 Corinthians 6, 17, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. And notice what he says, I will receive you. God has promised us some things. He's promised us that he will take and he will reveal himself to us in our lives. But how does that come? It comes through reading God's word, meditating on God's word. He promises us that he'll meet with us individually. We don't have to go to a priest. We don't have to go to a person and hear the word of God. He talks to us directly, right through his word. He meets with us individually. He's clearly told us he will bless us. He will give us blessings. He'll make us happy. We'll have that spring in our step. He says, we will be his people. We'll be his people. We'll be part of his family. He also promises us that we'll enjoy his presence. 
I always think of uh, when it comes down to this particular area, always remember Psalms 23. Psalms 23, it's just one of those, such a comforting song. Psalm, I'm sorry. He's promised that he's going to watch over us. And he's promised us that he will guide our steps and guide our ways. So don't forget to remember we are blessed. This is Alan. I will catch up with you a little bit later.